Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers are advised that the following program contains images, voices and names of deceased people. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands and waters throughout Australia. The Wathaurong people on the Bellarine, where sovereignty has never ceded. It always was and always will be Aboriginal land. We recognise the past atrocities against Aboriginal peoples of this land and that Australia was founded on the genocide and dispossession of First Nations people. We pay our respect to Elders past and present and acknowledge their continuing relationship to this land and the ongoing living cultures of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples across Australia. Just a little bushwalker and I'm about to go in. I think I may have been caught. There's a little possum. Hi, it's Peter and welcome to Squatters. Right, well, I've just been dropped off and um, tonight is a very special night of Squatters because I'm actually staying on a very prominent hill on the Bellarine Peninsula. A hill that from it, you can pretty much see the whole greater Geelong region. could understand, you know, that when first settlers first came to Australia, into this region anyway, that it'd be a strategic spot for them to take. So we're going to learn about the Murradoch Hill tonight. Murradoch. Murradoch Hill. Beautiful night to be out squatting. Check it out, the Bellarine Peninsula is just amazing. Earlier on, I went and stashed my gear. Hopefully, safe there. So, when I arrive, I'll just be a little day hiker with my day pack going for a walk and no one will suspect that I'll be squatting overnight to the place where I'm going to squat tonight is just over there just down that back passage up there whilst this spots a very beautiful place it's right next to the road and there's some walkers and cars that come past quite regularly as you can see there's one now but 
there's, there's quite a few that come down here and they create a bit of dust. So. But hopefully once the dust settles and it gets a bit darker, here comes another truck. Yeah, once the, uh, once the traffic dies off, it'll be really quiet up here. So yeah, looking forward to a great night. So what I thought I might do, is just come and sit here. I'm just gonna watch the sunset. Can you imagine being here 180 years ago? It was just plains and a few trees and kangaroos everywhere, indigenous people. You would have been going, oh, this is Christmas, all this land. Well, tonight we're going to talk about one of the early landholders here. His name was Thomas Sprout and he had all of this land, all the way down to the back of Drysdale. Actually, there's a street in Drysdale down there called Sprout Road, named after him. But he had this area and this area above here. Up there is the beacon. It's the beacon f which you can see for miles. It's, a, it's an aerial beacon. It's to guide planes, it's to guide boats. It's, uh, it's amazing. So you can see, I, oh, you can't see, but in the distance is a massive tanker. But that tanker will be able to see that beacon for absolute miles out, out to sea. And uh, yeah, it actually lines up with the beacon on the Yu Yangs which also lines up with the airport at Avalon. So it actually helps the pilots line up the runway at Avalon Airport. Fun fact. It doesn't matter where I go on the peninsula. I'm always tracked by a willy wagtail. Here they are, the willy wagtails. Beautiful little birds. You wouldn't really, you wouldn't really notice them. But it's like they all they follow me everywhere. It's like they're watching. Look at the view they've got. They get to enjoy this every day. There goes the sun. All right. Well, I'm gonna head into my place. It's pretty quiet. I want to get in before it gets dark. So I'm just gonna walk along here. I'll walk along the edge. Here. You pretty much can't see behind behind here. I mean, if you stopped and had a good look you would see but people aren't even looking for me I'll just drive straight past okay just a little bushwalker and I'm about to go in my little campsite for the night and hopefully oh the wind is a southerly wind it could be a bit chilly but anyway here I thought here would be a good spot. Here's my stash from earlier. So I've got my June swag again. I'm just gonna set it in this little bit of grass. Obviously other people have camped at this spot because there's signs of that there and there's some beer cans over there. I'll, um, I'll clean them up before I go. I'll take them with me with my rubbish. Okay, it's getting getting dark now. The, the swag's all good to go. Um, shortly I'll get, some, get the dilly on, get some coffee. Then I'll go and uh, get some dinner happening. Very special treat tonight, very special. Gas essential.
our fry pan tonight. My camping fry pan. I'm gonna give this a shot. In here I have my little gas stove, which is a brilliant buy. Water bottle, I'll fill this up. There we go, just a little bit. It's great. And then obviously I've got my little Kona coffee again. A little powder for my cup. Let's just heat up. Heat up some of that water. We don't need heaps of water. Let's crank it up a bit. Great. Okay, the billy is boiling. Look at it, it's starting to boil. And uh, while that's starting to boil, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Reverend Thomas Sprout. Thomas Sprout was born in Borg on the Borg Peninsula on the 2nd of May 1798 and was baptised into the Church of Scotland two weeks later by his religious farming parents Thomas and Mary Sprout. The town Borg comes from an old Norse word, Borg, which means fort or a prominent hill and the church where Thomas was baptised sits on the top of this hill. Thomas's mother was from the Brown family and for generations the Brown and Sprout family inhabited this peninsula in their family farm in Bridgehouse. They were long regarded by others in the region as peculiar as they were quite an insular tribe. The Browns and the Sprouts intermarried and not only had a love for farming but for botany, science, faith and family. Ironically their Bridgehouse family farm today has been converted into a family holiday park. In his 20s, Thomas travelled to Edinburgh and in 1824 graduated from Edinburgh University as a reverend with a Master of Arts, specialising in religion, science and civil studies. It was during this time in Edinburgh Thomas would have connected with George Mercer as they lived just 1.4 kilometres from each other. George Mercer initially recruited hundreds of investors into the Port Phillip Association, the original invasion force here in Port Phillip. But after it dissolved, Mercer lured investors into prime Port Phillip land in the new Derwent Company. It was this investment which led to Thomas Sprout emigrating to Australia. Arriving in Port Phillip on July 30, 1841, aboard the Westminster. Within a few years, Thomas Sprout's investment into the Derwent Company cashed in and meant he became a major landowner of the Bellarine Hills, the current location of Drysdale. His relative John Brown also came out from the Borg Peninsula and took up land northeast of Thomas at the current location of Port Arlington. Being on the Bellarine, it would have just been like being back at home, a peninsula with a prominent hill where they could farm their sheep. Whilst there was no Church of Scotland in the region, religion was certainly present. His passion for community led him to be involved also in an emigration venture, recruiting workers from the UK to the Geelong region. In this period of history, reverends with a civil degree at university could become magistrates. On the 22nd of July 1844, Thomas Sprout was sworn in as one of the first magistrates for the Western Victoria region. 
Thomas was not only a very influential person in the region, he also held over 1,280 acres of the Bellarine Hills. Until his shock departure and return back to his homeland in 1852. Not much is known about Thomas Sprout at all, but we do know he passed away on January 30th, 1859 at Moffat, Dumfrieshire, just a short distance from his birthland, Borg. What was he like? As we'll find out shortly, the land he took ownership of here on the Bellarine already had an owner. As a man of God, was he kind to these owners, the original owners, the First Nations people? We'll explore this shortly. It's nice to have a bit of a, a warm drink inside. Gotta turn the torch off, the light off because uh, there's a car coming. cooking dinner and tonight I'm having burgers but not just any burger we're having kangaroo burgers absolutely we are having kangaroo there would have been kangaroo everywhere here and uh, no kangaroo tonight so in honor of our indigenous ancestors we're having kangaroo such a beautiful night Stick some oil in there. Here we go. Cobram garlic infused oil tonight. Got a little, a little kangaroo steak here. Just needed in this one tonight. Is, to, is one of the most healthiest meats. It's good for you, really good for you, better than lamb even. But um, you know, we had an abundance of kangaroo, not quite sure why we didn't have kangaroo as a native animal of choice to eat. And the indigenous did to be a, a very nice staple meal. And this is, this is the burger, kangaroo burger. Delicious. So I'm having that with a bit of a brioche here. And uh, it's going to be delicious. While we wait for this to cook, let's find out a little bit about the indigenous from this area. When Reverend Thomas Sprout purchased this land on the Bellarine Hills, he was actually taking over the traditional lands of the Wathaurong people. 
For thousands of generations, the Bengalic clan had been custodians of these lands, and within a few years, not only had they lost their land, but their identity, purpose, and freedoms. The chief of the Bengalic clan was a man called Maradananuk. According to early squatter and surveyor John Helder Wedge, Maradananuk was one of 70 of the first Wathorong people he met along with John Batman at the indented head camp in 1835. It was common knowledge that Maradananuk lived on top of this prominent hill. It was a high and spiritually significant place. He could see any threats, protect his people, see the coming weather, have corroboree. It was also the home of Bunjil, their creator spirit. When religious man Thomas Sprout arrived in 1841, Maradonanook had already been displaced by the actions of the Poor Philip Association and the new Derwent Company, and Thomas was able to purchase these lands from the Crown. But was Maradonanook still roaming these lands? Did Thomas care for him and his people? Thomas certainly would have been able to empathise with Maradonanook. Thomas had come from a peninsula with a high mountain, which was not only sacred, but a protective fort. Thomas was also raised with a science background and would have understood the significance of taking care of native flora and fauna. He was a magistrate, so he knew to be fair. Plus, he also came from a tight-knit family who for generations had been custodians of the Borg Peninsula. And ultimately, he had a faith that taught he should love his neighbour. Many of the Scottish named areas of Western Victoria after their homeland. But not this hill. Was it because of people like Thomas that the name of Maradananook was not lost in history? The hill and the main road from Drysdale to St Leonard's is now named after him. Maradoc Road, Maradoc Hill. Is it also a coincidence that the land owned by Sprout is now also a family recreation reserve and central business district of Drysdale, which also now has a Wathorong Memorial Park? These Bellarine Hills later became named Drysdale after the first female squatter, Anne Drysdale, that preceded Thomas into this area. If it wasn't for this squatter's map and the Sprout Street signs in Drysdale and Port Arlington, we wouldn't know of Thomas's adventure to Australia. Both Brown and Sprout Streets in Port Arlington are named after John Brown and Thomas Sprout, these Scottish relatives who carried on their Borg Peninsula legacy, albeit for a short period of time here on the Bellarine. Maybe they returned to Scotland because they were financially struggling. Or maybe it was just because they couldn't bear to see Maradunanook and his people suffer anymore. There are so many questions, so many assumptions. We know little of Thomas, but we know even less of Maradunanook. What we do know is that the culture and the people of the Bengalic clan after tens of thousands of years roaming these lands was virtually lost in just over a decade. We don't know what happened to Maradunanuk, other than the last of his clan died out in the 1870s. However, we know after 12 years on the Bellarine, Thomas was lucky enough to return back to his homeland of Scotland and enjoy the creature comforts of his family, culture and land. Whilst he never married, his Bellarine Hills estate sold for £3,000 and he was able to pass on that onto his family in Scotland. Lucky for him because the Indigenous Australians didn't have that opportunity. Their land, their culture, their identity and purpose was stolen. They lost absolutely everything. So today, when you drive up to the Muradoc Hill, or you drive up Muradoc Road, let us remember Maradunanuk and his Bengalit clan.
bit of brioche. Yeah. I'm gonna put the brioche on the kangaroo on the brioche. Let's let's uh double cheese it tonight, cheese at the bottom and cheese on the top. Let it melt for a little bit. Oh, so good. Alright. Okay, so the cheese has melted a bit on the top. Let's give it the taste test to see how it goes. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, this is good. What do you think of kangaroo? Have you tried it before? If so, put it in the comments. Um, what else would you like me to try when I am out camping? Let me know in the comments if you want me to cook anything specific. But tonight, while we're on the Maradoc Hill honoring Maradananook, I thought it was fitting we had kangaroo and it is delicious. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see, but just up there is a possum. But hear all this creaking around. I'm wondering what it was. There's a little possum coming down to visit and see who's in his home. I bought my powers, power pack with me this time to uh, charge my phone so I can keep filming. So, even though I haven't filmed that much, it's on low battery. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that charged and hope you're enjoying this episode of Squatters so far. I'm gonna go get into the swag. Just in case it rains. Hold this under here. Inflatable pillow, a self inflatable pillow. So, I'm um, just gonna chill, enjoy the serenity. This is just so good, it's so quiet. Just me and the possums. Now, I wonder what the spiritual significance is of a possum. Last time I had the owl. This time I've got the possums. Hmm, I wonder what the significance of the possum is. Anyway, let's have a think. If you have any questions, if you've got any information about Thomas Sprout or um, Maradananuk, just uh, put it in the comments. What do you think? My next squat is going to be very interesting too. It's going to be at a place that has a lot of historical significance to this region. And it's going to be interesting squatting without being noticed. A stealth squat at this next location is going to be very tricky. Anyway, tonight's been good. I've only nearly been busted a few times. But um, I think everyone's home asleep now, so I should be right. Just... Just the possum watching over me. Apparently possums are protectors. That's good. Getting the protection of the possum. Apparently uh, willy wagtails are also messengers. Messengers to the great spirits. And also there to protect us. Because apparently they also report back to the spirits what we say in their Aboriginal culture. So not only have they uh, been following me, they've been reporting back to the spirits what I've been saying. So hopefully they're getting the memo that we're actually wanting to restore Indigenous culture, to restore the legacy of their ancestors and to uh, see this country healed Pretty good, I think I'm gonna 
head off to bed because it's so quiet and so relaxing. Yeah, because I sleep. Mm. Well, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> what a great sleep. So nice. Gentle breeze this morning. It's meant to be raining, but it's not raining yet. I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed this place. Maradoc Hill is amazing. And um, thinking about uh, Maradunanuk and all his people. I just pray that today um, their memory will be kept alive, their culture will be empowered and um, that we can continue to work for reconciliation. Oh, it's a new day. There's a lot of hope in today, a lot of potential. But um, right now, I'm going to pack up, get home and get some breakfast and then uh, head off to work. Okay, so just cleaned up my site so it's a little bit cleaner than what it was when I first got here. But anyway, I think it's time to head off. Can you see that from the road? Nope, I can't see this way. I'm gonna head off and I'll come back and pick up the swag later. Anyway, what a beautiful day. Now I'm just an early morning walker. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Squatters. And, uh, stay with us next time for our next exciting squat.